how do I get this off now? I got it on, but it's one thing to go down the boobs. It's something else to come back up. This, I live here now. Now we've got to, oh, ow. I deserve everything I get, ow. To say that I am excited about the new League of Their Own TV show is an understatement. One does not simply say that one is excited, one becomes effervescent at a new 1940s sports TV show. I'm an artsy fartsy person, but I have this deep, deep love for mm, sports movies. I don't know what it is, I just love them. And this one is about women, queer women, and it takes place in the 1940s, so obviously we're making a uniform. <laughs> we are literally making from scratch a Rockford Peaches uniform as close to the original as I can possibly get. I'm not gonna get too much into it right now, but spoilers, World War II happened. The AAGPBL, All American Girls Professional Ball League, as it became known, was formed in 1943 by Wrigley of Wrigley's Chewing Gum. Wrigley's wife and his art director, Otis Shepard, designed the original tunics. Based off of field hockey and figure skating outfits, the tunics were made of a durable, heavy cotton twill. Despite what some sources may say, the uniforms were not made of wool as it was heavily rationed. This is a mock-up, so I'm not bothering with buttons. Uh, one, two, three buttons. The collar is good. Um, there's movement in the arms because of the construction of the back with the gathering there. All in all, I think this is actually really, really great. This is a solid pattern. So anyone who wants to make their own American Girls Baseball League uniform, buy this one with a couple modifications that need to happen. So for instance, I didn't cut this side out properly. I cut two sides that looked exactly like this panel right here. And when I was sewing it together, I was like, mm, is that actually what the uniform looks like? I don't know. Did a bit more research into existent uniforms that I could find. So like here, you can see I, I cut both sides out like this. The pattern actually had a line straight down to mimic the look from the tunics in the movie. Since I can't find any original tunics that are opened, because why would they be? I'm going to trust that it's not, I'm going to trust that this is the line. If the movie shows it being like this, why would they just change the uniform? This has no bearing on how it's viewed on screen. If if they were gonna change the uniform, they would change it to like be more flattering to to boobs. They would they would change it to be more flattering to boobs if you you want to get people to watch a movie about sports women? Talk about their boobs. What if I had a key moment in the game? My, my uniform bursts open and, and uh, oops, my bosoms come flying out. <laughs> that that might, might draw a crowd, right? This original pattern doesn't have a zipper. She does say that you can add one in if you want, but she doesn't give you placement on the pattern itself. So looking at the uniforms, from the museum archives. There's a zipper down the side on this side, which will make it easier for the waistline to open up to get it over poofy hair, shoulders, boobs, and then zip it up and it's nipped in at the waist. And then, and then it's just more comfortable. Many months later. This is day 10 of COVID. It is July 12th. Uh, <laughs> this project has been going on for two years and to be fair to myself and the project <laughs> a lot of that was inactive i found out about a league of their own in late 2020 because they were filming it and i got very excited understatement 2020 is when they announced that they were filming it <coughs> excuse me sorry you know during the pandemic at the, the beginning beginning of the pandemic they announced that they were filming it. And then uh, I was like, yes, I'm going to do this thing. So I went out and I bought the fabric and uh, all, all the accoutrement, well, not the accoutrement, I bought the fabrics then and, and started like researching things and looking deeper into pictures. Um, and then uh, the pandemic continued and and I was able to return to film work, which definitely put uh, a, a limit on the amount of time that I could spend on the project. I no longer had just like full days at my disposal. I had no sense of urgency, um, which is part of the reason that I kept procrastinating. And I was like, oh, I, I guess I'll start this up. And once I started it, I was like, yes, 
um, and then you know you hit a roadblock and you're like mm, for some reason I am terrified of messing up the skirt I don't know I don't know why I'm discussed that with my therapist today I'm terrified of messing up the skirt so listen <laughs> You're not watching this channel because I'm perfect. <laughs> I'm far, so very, very far from perfect. Perfect doesn't exist in this world, despite what my inner monologue believes. Perfection is a myth, and this is not going to be perfect. This is going to be my best attempt to recreate a Rockford Peaches uniform to the best of my ability with my very limited skills and the tools that I have at my disposal, which are the internet. The seam ripper is my best friend when I sew. The sooner we just all accept that that is the truth of things and the, the happier we will all be. And then uh, we lost our baby. We lost our sage, our, our little girl, our kitten, our cat. Uh, that was not a procrastination, that was grieving, and I am still grieving, let's not get ourselves here, but um, I'm through the m major fog of it, and I have the desire to work on things again, so I have started. And throughout the last two years, I have been working on the smaller aspects, I would pick them up and do a little bit, and then I would put it down, but it is July 12th and the TV show airs August 12th, and I very much want this video to, at least part one of this video, to coincide with that. I'm off sick with COVID, obviously, which... <coughs> Take two. Uh, this week, <coughs> more of a functioning human being, still contagious. I have enough energy to dispose of in a productive way and still work on recuperating. So I'm going to tackle the skirt. You're gonna live. You stink. You're gonna live. You're... I have decided that it's going to be a full circle skirt. I'm choosing to go with a full circle because the incredible women of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League by Anika Orak. Uh, there is one Lois Youngin. She says, if you look at the original uniform, it's got like three yards of material in it. It's got all kinds of extra skirt. You try to bend over and pick up a ground ball, you've got mostly skirt and no ball. So three yards of material in the skirt. I think that's it. inaccurate. I, I don't think that it's actually three. That, it, that would be an enormous skirt. Three yards of fabric in the skirt would just be insane. But a full circle skirt requires about two yards which is still a significant amount of fabric for a sports uniform. I have some basic pink cotton I'm going to use. We're gonna cut that out and then we are going to attach it to the bodice that I already have, that I already quite like. Uh, and then we're gonna see where we are. Uh, yeah. Come along with me for this so very not perfect. Things that we know about the skirt. It is it is quite a full skirt. If it's a if it's a circle or if it's a three-quarter, I don't know, but it is a full skirt. There are no gatherings. The skirt waistline is not gathered. The bodice is gathered to the skirt. The skirt does have two what I believe are pleats at the front waistline. If we zoom in here, you can see that there are two seam lines that go down, I wanna say three or four inches from the waist down. Uh, and that I think is to help pull in some of the material of the skirt while still allowing lots of movement for running. Um, so there's no restriction. You know what else would have given her full leg movement? Pants. <laughs> he did it. He it did it. Like, this. <laughs> I did it. I figured it out. It's it's a full skirt. Look at that. Look at that. There is the mock-up of my peaches. <laughs> it took me two years to finally just get past my mental block, and I did it. They did it, guys. This is what they all look like. This is this is exactly how the skirts looked. In all the pictures, this is how they look. Um, I inserted the side zip. Let me tell you, no small feet. Get mock-ups, so this is very rough. No buttons, because mock-up. But I think this is, 
think this is it. And the belt loops will sit there and there. Yeah, it's good. It's real good. The regulations said that it, the skirt couldn't be more than six inches above the knee. What does yes, very good, very good indeed. You can actually see that some of them hemmed it significantly. Um, six inches. I do a six inch hem. Can you imagine? Um, <clears throat> oh, that's short. Friends, I'm very happy with where I am with this right now. I think tomorrow we can start cutting out the actual dress, cutting out all the stuff that we need. I'm very excited with who we are. I hope you are too. <laughs> I will see you tomorrow. It is time. It is time. <laughs> Still with the COVID, yeah. And I put on real clothes because I wanted to pretend that I felt better. And like, <laughs> It's the things that we do, right? The, the lies we tell ourselves. <laughs> Let's just do it. Let's just do it and get it done. Because why? Perfection is a myth. Let's just get that on t-shirts. Dirt in the skirt, here we go. The most interesting difference I found, really, other than the patch, of course, which we'll talk about in a later episode, is the color of the tunic. The movie chose a really soft baby pink. And in reality, I think, judging from the existing garments, the actual color of the original tunics, for the Rockford Peaches anyways, was a much more vibrant peachy pink. You can see it in the areas that would have not been exposed to the sun quite as much, so along the belt line, the back of the neck, and under the arms. Costumes in a movie have to tell part of the story, otherwise movies would be five hours long. I'd love to know the costume designer's reasoning for choosing a softer baby pink rather than going for something that was closer to the original. Oh hey, check it out. No big deal. Just me, learning from my mistakes and, you know, transferring my marks. Peach tip! So it had been a hot minute since I sewed anything, so I thought maybe a little machine maintenance was a smart idea. Mm, ew. I am gonna go put a mask on. <laughs> just, just a little dusty. Just a little dusty and gross. You know, I definitely recommend every once in a while just cleaning out your machine because that was nasty. Also, switch out your needles regularly. If you ever find that you're having a bit of a struggle getting through some material when you shouldn't be, it's probably because it's time to switch out that needle. Like here, I'm putting a denim needle on because I'm a smarty pants. Okay, we need to cut out the interfacing for a couple pieces. One one of the collars, I need interfacing for the neckline, the, this thing. I need to interface the short fold over and I need to interface the longer fold over, or the wider fold over. Those are the front facings, the neck facing, and the collar. Because I'm using denim, I probably didn't need to interface. It's stiff enough on its own. But if you were to use something lighter or wool, you would definitely want to interface these pieces. Finish the outside edges of the front facing and the back facing. Outside edge, I guess. I swear I've made this before. I mean, you saw the mock-up. You know I've made this before. It's just been two years, so I forgot. It's fine. That's why we have instructions. Mm, I think I'm running out of And now it's time for darts. Oh my god, you guys. Never have I ever made such beautiful darts. Seriously, I need everyone to look and appreciate this because I... It was the straightest line I've ever done in my life. Look at that! Freeze frame for the gorgeousness. I'm playing a little game right now with how much sewing can I get done before I run out of 
my thread. <laughs> um. <laughs> As you can see, we're getting there. We're getting very close to um, n not having <laughs> enough. I think I'm gonna get these darts done and then maybe whatever the next step is, I might get done. But then it's, I, I sent out a bad signal. I sent out a bad signal to a friend who is going to go and pick up some thread for me because she's amazing. <laughs> You know what? Get yourself some friends who will pick up the most random things for you when you are in isolation during COVID. Get yourself friends who will pick up a certain thread color for you. That is true love. <laughs> okay, let's see how far we get, shall we? Rich, <laughs> 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 oh, we're getting close. Am I gonna make it? I might make it. I might make it. <laughs> I win. <laughs> Woo. But I legit don't think we can do it. <laughs> I get until my little my hero brings <laughs> me some thread. I think uh, this this may be where we stop <laughs> for now. Thread. I actually don't think I bought a new spool of thread when I started this project. I think I was using one that I had already because it was the preferred color. Regardless. <clears throat> Thank you. We did the outside fold over we did the darts and then we did the um gathering stitches and that is where we finished so the next step is going to be to um put the two back pieces together uh by pulling at the gather stitches so to do that we're going to pull up the bobbin threads bring that bad boy into alignment all right so here is the upper back and I have to gather this in enough to align it with this piece. Something I'm doing a little bit more differently here that I observed on existing tunics in the pictures is instead of gathering all the way across like the instructions for this pattern tell me to do, I'm actually only going to gather them about to the shoulder blades. This leaves a little bit of a flat space for the tunic number to be visible. I apologize for the out of focusness here. Uh, what you're uh, sort of about to see is me top stitching. We're attaching the front to the back at the shoulders. Normally what happens at this point is you also attach along the sides under the arms, but the instructions here didn't want me to do that. Instead, the first step to the sleeves was actually to hem the sleeve. The pattern calls for a two inch hem on the sleeve. Looking at the Betsy Jockum tunic close up, you can see that it's actually just maybe a quarter inch hem really. The next step was to gather the sleeves and to align them Kind of like an open face sandwich. I've honestly never done sleeves like this before. It was really interesting and kind of fun. And now that I'm happy with how that looks, I am pulling up the basting stitches. What up, Seam Ripper? Honestly, after watching a Bernadette Banner video on, uh, the importance of ironing and proper tailoring techniques. I'm a little bit obsessed with how much of a difference ironing can it's make. It's gonna get real crispy as I go over <laughs> the first seam. Four layers of fabric here, I think. Like a champ. Way to go. That wasn't a seam. There was there was no reason for that. Root. You know what? It's nice and clean. I'm good with it. 
instructions say to sew from sleeve hem to the armpit and then down the side of the bodice. It was a really unique way of doing it. I've never come across another pattern that had me make a sleeve like that. A plus, would do again. Just so that I remember, we're gonna put a little notch. A Z for zipper. Z, because I'm Canadian. for zipper. Now it's time for the collar. Honestly, y'all, collars mess with me big time. It always takes me several attempts to get a collar on properly and even then I usually just end up giving up and being like, whatever, you're fine. No one's gonna be looking this closely anyways. Just grade your seams and, and move on. But actually this collar wrap, surprisingly knock on, on wood, went on really easily. And I'm top stitching to make it look really pretty and like the originals. All right, now we're getting to the facing part. We're attaching the front facing to the neck facing to the other front facing. It turns out that having me finish the edges before doing this part was kind of a genius move on the designer's <laughs> part. Massive thank you to Designing Twining for, you know, doing the thinking for me. Another modification I'm going to be making to the pattern is instead of top stitching as they recommend, uh, up one side of the facing and across the neckline and back down, I'm actually only going to be top stitching the neckline because if you zoom in on the Betsy Jockum tunic, you can see that the top stitching actually stops right around where the collar points are. So obviously, I'ma do the same. So thrilled to finally have sneak peeks at the new league of their own because according to the AAGPBL, my bestie, um, according to them, the new series has more accurate, has more accurate, they say, um, has more accurate costumes uh, in line with the 1945-46 season. Uh, and from what I can tell, they say more accurate. They don't say what exactly is more accurate. I think the logo is more accurate. Um, they have red buttons. I'm inclined to think that the buttons were red or they were like a ready brown wood. Um, so I have to find some buttons for that. I, they look like they're about, they're, they're a good size. They're about an inch. All of the Exident tunics I can find have buttons on them but the thing is that um i don't think that the women were given new uniforms every season unless the uniform changed dramatically anybody who played that entire decade probably got one or two tunics um so you would have just been patching repairing and we see that on some of the museum photographs. Most assuredly, the buttons would have been one of the first things to go with these women sliding into base and running and washing their tunics every night. They played the circuit and they played it hard. So I don't think that any tunics I see that are OG official tunics, not the leak of their own stuff, I don't think any of those tunics have the original buttons. Good morning. Uh, okay. <laughs> Today. We gotta get, we gotta get our, our butts in gear because the countdown is on. A League of Their Own airs in two weeks. Two weeks yesterday, yes. Two weeks yesterday, August 12th. So, so today we have to, I found buttons. We have to attach the buttons. We have to make the button holes, attach the buttons. Then once that is done, then I can baste the lower half of the garment together. And then I can do gathering stitches and then I can sew it to the skirt, hem it, and the tunic would be done. That's the big push today is finish the tunic. It's not hard, I've just been stalling. 
So they all have their virtues. I still can't determine what kind of buttons they were. Given that the accessories are all the complementary color to the uniform, I, I've, I've decided that the buttons were likely also a complementary color. I went with this one. It's not wood, but it looks like wood, which would have been an option. This one looks like lucite and celluloid. It's not, but, but it passes. And this one made me think of like Bakelite, Bakelite, however you say that. Did a little research and the 40s was a time more for uh, lucite materials. It was apparently a pretty durable plastic, plastic, manufactured by the DuPont company, if you'll remember from the nylons episode. Here's, let's take a look at how it looks with the material. I mean, this one looks super plasticky because it's so shiny. This one looks, I think this one's too orange. I think it's too tomato red rather than like a bluey red, which is what the accessories all look like. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it out. Also, I feel like on all the images I've seen, the buttons have a shine to them. And this one, this one doesn't shine. So I'm gonna take that one out. Look at this, right? Look, that's that's that bouton, and that is that bouton. And this one almost looks black, right? But this one, you can see, like, you can tell that it's modeled, and like, you can see why I thought maybe it was like a brown, a brown and beigey button. Now hers look, you know, they honestly look like they could be this sort of woodeny button. Mm. No. I really do think that we might be leaning more towards this one. Once you factor in how it looks in black and white, it's definitely a four hole button and it's got an outer ring. I think shape wise, it looks more like this. I think that's a more accurate shape, but I think the color is not quite right. Oh, maybe it is. Oh gosh, <laughs> no. what do I do? This part's always really nerve wracking to me because it's like, I'm about to make this giant hole in this almost finished product and there's kind of no coming back from that. So, I mean, they're measured, they're the right size. Get over it, get over it, Katie, let's go. And uh, you know, because I like to keep you guessing, <laughs> Here's the button that I chose. Does it does it fit? It fits through. Okay, great. <laughs> there. We're going with this one. The one that nobody expected me to go with because I eliminated it so early. I have no way of knowing what they actually look like except knowing that they had four holes. I feel like from what I've seen in the pictures, this shape uh, including the center ring right there, uh, and I think the color is probably closest. If you guessed right, <laughs> congratulations! This is the one that I went with. And we can move on to the skirt! Woo! We are sewing the sides of the skirt. I chose to make the skirt two sizes larger to give me some space to put the pleats in. Um, here's the thing, I don't math well, so if anyone can explain to me a really simple way to figure out pleat measurements or how to insert pleats, I would truly be forever grateful. Um, I, I legit was just like, if I make this two sizes larger and then use a ruler, maybe that'll work? I have no draping, no pattern making skills. I, I don't know how to do that yet. That's, I wanna learn, but I don't know how to do that yet. So probably what had to happen was the front of the skirt is probably a three quarter skirt and the back is probably a quarter skirt to get us a full circle. 
right? The reason I'm saying that that's probably what it was is because the side seams, now that I've pleated, they're no longer down the side where they should be. And that's fine, um, but ideally they would be down, down the sides right here uh, instead of where they are, which is right there. Now, could I make an adjustment? Could I change that? It's not so bad, especially when it's actually up on my hips where it should be. Anyways, this is what it is. If I wear it where it should be, which is on my natural waist, which is right there, then they're more or less down the sides. That's good enough for me. How it, this, is, this is the skirt. So I'm going to baste the line to keep the pleats in place. And then I'm going to stitch down about three, maybe four inches. We're gonna go down four inches and that will keep the skirt somewhat in place while still being a V full skirt. How do I get this off now? I got it on, but it's one thing to go down the boobs. It's something else to come back up. This, I live here now. Now we've got to, oh, ow. I deserve everything I get, ow. Oh, we're so close, I can taste it. Okay, so here I chose to make the tunic numbers out of felt. Existing garments have either silk or felt backings. Um, I couldn't tell from the original Peaches tunic what kind of material it had been, so I chose felt. Partially because felt just felt more durable and, and felt like a more likely material for the time. Um, but there are examples of satin numbers on the backs of these tunics. I also went with the number 11 because when we were younger, my sister and I, when we played soccer, had the number 11 on our jerseys. Her probably because it was her favorite number and me because I wanted to be just like her. Also, my birthday is October 11th. So as you can see, I pinned the numbers down and they were perfectly aligned. And then I decided to hand baste because I don't know, I just thought that would be fun for some reason. And uh, once I was done sewing and pulling up the hand basting, um, they were crooked, you know, you, whatever. Okay, finally, finally, we are putting in the basting stitches on the bottom of the tunic and then we are going to gather. Gathering stitches, basting. That's the basting, those are the two gatherings. All right. And uh, I fortunately know a little magic. Gathered. Here we go, we're going through like, oh my God, so many layers of fabric. We're doing okay, we're doing okay. Not bad for a little brother sewing machine. Come on, you can do it. I've got faith of Now, uh, I have to insert the zipper and for that, from what I've been able to see from Exident Garments, it's a, a lapped zipper, which makes sense. A lot of vintage clothing had lapped zippers. And I'm familiar with doing a lapped zipper on a lot of the Gertie patterns, but she has designed them so that they are ready for a lapped zipper. Whereas this was designed without putting a zipper in. Uh, so there's no allowance for that. So I've made a, an extra placket here that I'm going to use. It's the length of the zipper opening. Now I have to start pinning it and ironing and all the good stuff. Let's go. If you decide that you want to use this pattern and you want to put the zipper in, consider that she didn't design it for a zipper. So it is a little bit spacious in sizing. You may want to consider sizing down. That being said, there are stories of the ladies from the AAGPBL who say that the tunics were just these large sack-like things and the belts were designed to make it look like they had a waist, but really the belts were useless. So, you know, take from that what you will. 
if I were to make this again, I might size the tunic down or tailor it in just a little bit more. Um, and uh, yeah. Okay, so I have pressed and rolled and pressed and rolled and now we're hemming. And it's my first time using a blind hem foot. I don't know that it's actually gonna serve any super great purpose for this. Uh, I just wanted to try it out because I've never used it before. Okay, here we go. Seriously, I've been sleeping on this thing. It is amazing. Everybody should get themselves a blind hem foot. That thing slaps. Seriously, this is... That is gorgeous. Peach tip. Okay. I will never not use the hem foot. <laughs> Did you think you were going to see the whole thing? Did you think I was actually going to just reveal the whole tunic to you? In just no, 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 no. There is, there is patches. There are shorts. There is a belt, and there is a hat. Yes, I am making a hat from scratch. I know I'm insane. There's been crying, and we all know that there is no crying in baseball. So if you want to see me make these shorts and this hat, uh, then you're going to need to like and subscribe because I don't know when I'm going to upload that. I mean, I know I have a rough idea. It's going to be soon, but like, it could be tomorrow, it could be right now. And you might be missing it because you didn't like and subscribe. So maybe you should. Um, but I'm happy to be back and thank you so much for watching and I will catch you on the flip side. Okay, is that good? There is crying and sewing though. It happens. Let's uh, get some dirt in the skirt. Go peaches. Um,